smiling to the man. Don't put your hand down. How many of you have bank account? Don't tell anybody a secret now. <laughs> Approximately 90% of the persons who are sitting here tonight have a bank account. But they will not tell you exactly where the money is hidden. May I say that? Where it says Royal Scotia First Caribbean Do we have another? Or Bank of the Bahamas Or Commonwealth Some persons have bank account in the United States of America Some have all the way in Switzerland. Swiss bank account. Even if you have a dollar there, it's an account in Switzerland. Everybody likes to go to the bank where we're going to pull money or to deposit money. But there are always people smiling at the bank, including yourself. Because God in his infinite wisdom has allowed mankind with the ingenuity or a mindset to use money. It doesn't matter to God how much money you have. It matters to God how you use the money. And God, it is God's purpose to bless everybody with money. Help me somebody. God has entrusted everyone to have the responsibility to manage what they have. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1. What book did I say? Genesis chapter 1. And the verse is verses 26 onward. To 28. Genesis chapter 26, chapter 1, verses 26 to 28. And God said, Let us what? Make man in our what? After our own. And let them what? Have what? Dominion. Over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over what? The cattle and over what? All the earth and over every what? Creeping thing that what? Creeping upon the earth. So God created man in his what? Own image. In the image of God what? Created he him what? Male and created he them. And God what? Blessed them and God said unto them be what? Fruitful and what? Multiply and what? Replenishing her and what? Subdue it and have what? Dominion over the fish of the sea and over what? The fowl of the air and over what? Every living thing then what? 
decisions that God has made. But God said that he has made them to have dominion over them. Which means that man can dictate to them, man can move them anywhere he wants them to go. Animals cannot change clothing. Because God has designed animals and cattle and all of them in a unique way so they don't need to change clothes. But God said, I have made man in my own image. After my likeness. And gave him dominion over all living creatures upon the earth that is dealing with animals and of the animal kingdom. God here is saying that man can think on salvation but animals can think on salvation. Man can make houses but animals cannot make houses. Man can make decisions to follow Jesus, to follow God, but animals can't make those decisions. Mankind can trade and spend money and have a bank account and read, but animals, they don't go to the bank and they can't read. God says, I have placed man over my creation. And because of this, mankind is responsible to God because God has blessed him with things to do and to take care of what God has blessed him with. It means every one of us, we have the thinking capacity in our brain that animals don't have. But God says he takes care of the sparrow that flies. And he takes care of human beings that are on planet earth. What a mighty God. But God expects something special from mankind. Because man has the capacity to think some things that God himself thinks. And so man is intelligent. Man is the highest of the human family or the greater family that thinks and acts the way God does. Ladies and gentlemen, it is God's desire that every human being should be blessed with the blessings upon planet earth. The Bible says to us in 1 Timothy chapter 6, what book did I say? First to money. Chapter 6. Let's get over there quickly. Here the Bible says. First to money chapter 6 and verses 9 to 10. But they that will be what? Rich. Fall into what? Temptation and a what? Slayer into what? Very foolish and what? Hurtful us, which drown men in what? Destruction and what? Perdition. For the what? The love of money is the what? Root of all what? Evil. Which was somewhat coveted after they had what? Ed from the faith and what? Pierced themselves through what? With many what? Sorrows. There is nothing wrong with money. Hello somebody. But for the love 
was a man who took billions of dollars from people to invest. And somehow the Ponzi scheme went down. What happened to him was that he had a greed for money. The love of money is the root of all evil. You know, if some of us had just a little less money, we would worship God much better. Help me somebody. There's some time when we have the money, it gets us in trouble. When we should be worshiping God, we look at what we can get. Instead of remembering, it is God that gives us breath to have what we have. And I have never seen a money van at a funeral service. When we die, everything is gone. Matter of fact, they have said, those the pathologists, they have revealed what we worth when we die. They said, based on the corpse that's there, we are worth about one cent. The value of the corpse is about one cent. Because at that time, the body has put together all the chemicals together and that goes back to the ground and it works in human, human thinking once. But nobody will ever tell you that you work once and now. You will tell them that you're out of order. I'm a child of the king. Servant of the most high God. God's intention is to bless us with a lot of blessing, but sometimes when God blesses us, we, we move away from the power of God's blessing. God gives you a thousand dollars and he expects you to spend it wisely. So he watches you with a thousand and then he blesses you with, with, with ten thousand. When you live on a thousand, you are so blessed and you watch what you spend. There are certain things you won't do, but when you get ten thousand, things change now. You're going to let them see what you can wear. You're going to let them know what you can try. You're going to let them know what you can eat. That's not God's intention. God's intention is that we should have dominion over our blessings and to control what God has given unto us. First Chronicles. Let's go to First Chronicles. Let's see what the word of God has to say. First Chronicles. We're getting over there. The Bible says something here in First Chronicles chapter 29. What, what did I say? First Chronicles the 29th chapter. And the verse is verse 14. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 14. We're going to read right now to verse 17. First Chronicles chapter 29, verses 14 down to 17. But who am I? And what is my people? That we should be able to offer so what? Willingly after this sort. For what? All things come off thee. On our time have we what? For we are what? Strangers before thee and what? Sojourners as were all our what? Fathers. Our days on the earth are as a what? Shadow. And there is what? None abiding. O oh Lord, our God, all this store that we have prepared to build thee a house for thine holy name cometh of thine hand and is what? All thine own. I know also, my God, that thou what? Triest the heart and hast what? Pleasure in uprightness. As for me in the what? Of my heart. I have what? Willingly offered all these things. And now have I what? Seen with joy thy people which what? Are present here to what? Offer what? Willingly unto thee. God expects us to offer unto him willingly what we have. Because the body belongs to God. The breath belongs to God. The organs belong to God. Because God is the one who formed man from the dust of the earth. And then he blew into his nostril what? The breath of what? Life. And man became a what? Living soul. 
made man in his goodness. God blessed man and caused man to walk before him. But mankind has found themselves in a serious predicament. Why? Because the love of money has now become a problem to mankind. Mankind has gone to the extent now that he will sell himself. He will sell himself just for a few dollars. He will do some things just for a few dollars. You have let you have women out there that will sell their bodies just for a few dollars. There are mothers who have sold their daughters in prostitution just for a few dollars. There are parents over there that have sold even their sons in prostitution just for a few dollars. There are husbands who have sold their wives in prostitution just for a few dollars. There are wives who have sold their husband in prostitution just for a few dollars. Because they don't want to live within their means. One of the problems that God has with us is this, that we are not satisfied with what we have. We are seeing next door, they have changed the paint on the wall, so I have to change mine too. We are seeing those who have changed their cars, and somehow somebody feels, I have to change mine too. But God who has blessed you, God expects us to do what he says and be contented. Contented. So the man who has a 2010 car next door, me and I have a 1991 kind of car. I can tell you this, there is nowhere in Nassau that his car can take him that my car can take me. Because I'm satisfied with what God has blessed me with. His insurance is sky high, but my insurance, I know that I can pay each time. So I don't look next door to count my blessings from God. Do I have a witness in the house? I am contented with what I have because my God has blessed me. Who God bless? Let what? No one curse. Want to let you know that the man who has that car next door, when he goes to sleep at night, he's wondering if somebody's going to steal it. But when I go to sleep, I'm going to sleep like a baby. Because I know that this is not my final home. Heaven is my home. And so I don't need to have my mind on earthly things. Someone said, I've got my mind made up. And I must press on. There are many today who have reached to the point that they have gotten so materialistic. Some years ago, I had a VW Bug car. Help me somebody now. So when I had my VW car, somebody looked at me some years ago and they said, there is no way that you can drive a bug around here. Because nobody drives those cars around here. So I listened to what the person said. I said, well, I don't know about you. But I prayed to my God. And my God has blessed me. And I'm not going to put down God's blessings for your blessings. Because I know what my pocket can reach. And what God has blessed me with, I'm sure about his blessings. So one day they said, listen man, you need to change your car. I said, change what? I said, anywhere I want to go, this car will take me. I said to them, listen, I want to let you know that this VW car, they call it the bug. I said, listen, that doesn't bring prestige to me. I bring prestige to that because I'm a child of the king, a servant of the most high God. It doesn't matter where you live. All you need to do is keep it clean. If it's one bedroom, let it look good. Because God has blessed you. It doesn't matter what you drive. But who drives you? Let me somebody. Because God says he will bless his people. And he will keep them in the honor of his hands. When God has blessed you. 
first. Because you're set for life. You have everything covered. So if I am wearing one suit so many times, God has clothed me. And I'm happy because he knows how to rest the service. God said now that all that we have belongs to him. So what are we going to worry about? The Bible says in Haggai, Haggai chapter 1, this might be a difficult one for you to find, is Zephaniah, Haggai, and Zechariah. We're digging up the scriptures now. We're digging up the scriptures. Haggai, you have Habakkuk, have you ever heard about that one? Habakkuk, and you have Zephaniah, you have Haggai, you have Zechariah, Haggai. Haggai chapter 1 and verse 6. He have so what? Much. And bring in what? Little. He eat but he have not enough. He drink but he are not what? Filled with water. He what? Lord, you, but there is no war. And he that what? Earned wages. Earned what? Wages to put into a what? A bag with what? With holes. Have you seen why your money is going away from you when you can't know exactly where it's going? Because God has not breathed upon it. Because we use it. Because we feel we have dominion and power to do what we feel like doing. That's why we find ourselves in financial problems. We buy things we don't need. We go places we don't need to go. As a result of that, God says that you have been getting money, but you're placing the money in a bag of holes. And you're wasting your substance. And God wants us to realize that he says, I bless you. I have given you the fruits of the land. And you should manage it in a manner what is called stewardship. Every man is a steward. A steward of time. A steward of talent. A steward is somebody who takes care of what God has blessed him with. And God said, God is getting serious now this evening. Malachi chapter 3 now. Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi, you place your money in the bag with holes. Malachi 3. Verse 8 says, Will a man rob God? Yet he have what? Rob. But he said, wherein have we robbed thee? In what? Tithes and what? Offerings. He are what? Curse. With a curse. For he have what? Robbed me even this what? Whole nation. Whole nation. Is he talking about the Bahamas? Rob even this whole nation. Now God says a tithe is one-tenth of your income. Hello, somebody. And an offering is a free will gift. One-tenth means if you have gotten a thousand dollars as your income, how much is that is tithe? One hundred. And the offering is a what? Free will offering. It's a gift. I must let you know that in this country, we are blessed not to pay a lot of taxes. I thought I would have heard a lot of hey amen. It seems as if the government needs to put on something. But well, we can't let them do that. But notice, in order for the country to run, they will take just a little tax from us. But well, we don't make any noise about that. 
but I can use some of us. But the God who made you with the palm of his hand, place breath in your body for you to what? He says, return unto me, want it. And a free will offering. Who are we more obligated to? The country or to God? God is so good. God leaves us to make that choice. But the country, the leaders in the government, they take that from me. Give me this. But God says, I will not do that. I will leave you to your conscience. For you to decide. Yet he has the breath of life in his hands. What a loving God. God wants us to have good management of what he has blessed us with. So Jesus went to church one day. Mark chapter 12. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Let's see how Jesus observed what was going on. Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. The Bible says in verse 41, Mark chapter 12, and Jesus sat over against the what? The treasury. And what? He held over what? People cast money into where? The treasury. And many that were rich cast in what? And there came a what? Certain? Poor widow. Now watch this woman. She read the word of God. And Jesus was there supervising. And she what? Threw in what? Two months. Which made a what? Father. And he called unto to him his what? Disciples. And said unto them. Verily I said to you that this poor widow had cast more in then what? All which have what? Stretchy. For all they did cast in of their what? Abundance. But she of her what? Want. Then what? Casting all that she had. Even all of living. This poor widow. Number one. Notice she's a widow. Her husband died. And it was difficult for her to make a living. But she decided that it doesn't matter. I'm going to bless God. Because God says I must return. What Jesus opened this to us for us to understand. Is that Jesus expects all of us to do as this woman who didn't have her husband died and left her. And she brought in just what she had and gave it in the treasury of the church so that the gospel can be spread around the world. Amen. What is the saying to us tonight? It's a saying to us that God expects all of us to be obedient to him first. Because we are not our own. We are just pilgrims passing through. The Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. And God, God wants us to surrender our lives to Him. But I must let you know, when you surrender your life to Jesus, you will do what Jesus says. You will be obedient. Let me tell you, in order for you to be blessed, when you give God your best, God blesses you. He gives you more than what you ask for. That's why the Bible says that we should be conscious about how we manage what God has blessed us with. So it doesn't matter what people say about you. All you need to do is to do what God says. And when you do what God says, God will open up the windows of heaven and He will pour you out a blessing. Let's get back now to Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10. Malachi 3. In verse 10, he says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And what? Prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not what? Open to you the windows of heaven, and what? For you and what? That there shall be what? No more room to receive it. 
know why we have financial problems? Because we don't do what the Creator says. Not only that, He says, I will bless you. And you will not have room enough to receive it. What's the problem now is that we think we have too much small room people. God says, I will open the windows of heaven and what? Pull your down blessings. You should not have room enough to receive it. We need to build more big rooms. Help me, somebody. We need to think big now. We need to say, Lord, I'm going to do my part and you do the rest that you have promised. But God wants us, He wants to have a relationship with His people. Because he has blessed us with dominion over his creation. And so God's people never have problem with money. I heard a weak amen. God's people never have problems with money. Because little becomes much. But the, what the Lord is in it. I'm going to be contented with what I have. Because God has blessed me. He has opened the windows of heaven and poured blessings down. But this is very important now. Only those who are in a covenant relationship with Jesus, only those are satisfied with what they have. And when you give your heart to Jesus, you are contented with what he has blessed you with. You will be, you will be reminded that you're just a pilgrim passing through. You remember that the Lord give it and the Lord take it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. As a matter of fact, Job said, Job 1 verse 21. Job 1 verse 21 says, And he said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I what? Return thither the Lord gave, and the Lord hath what? Taken away what? Bless be the name of the Lord. In all this job sin not, nor charge God foolishly. Naked we came into this world. And naked we're going out. I can tell you that when I visited the morgue, everybody inside is naked. Strip everything off. Naked. You see, we're just pilgrims passing through. And God wants us to be reminded that when we die, there is no difference between the rich and the poor. Everybody's on the same level. When I look in the board, I saw some famous people in the Bahamas. I won't call any name. And when I look, I saw their bodies there just lined up. And then I saw some people who they thought more or less didn't have much. And they are lying down side by side. Nothing. Breath is gone. You see, it's always good to give our hearts to Jesus Christ. I'm glad to let you know tonight that when you give your heart to Jesus, your, your life becomes valuable in His sight. What is going on now is that God is calling His people to say, Come. Come. Your life has value and worth if you give me your life. You have worth. You have quality. And even when your body is there, I want to let you know that I have prepared for you a new body. And I will bless you. And I will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth. Hallelujah, somebody tonight. God says in Matthew chapter 6, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 19. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 19 says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Where what? Moth and rust, not what? And where what? Thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves what? Treasure in heaven. Where, where neither what? Moth nor rust, not the rust. And where what? Thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Tonight.
tonight, where is your treasure? Where is your treasure? Is it the figure in the bank? Or is it your commitment back to your creator? The one who gives you breath. The one who keeps the organs in your body moving. He is the one who says, Laugh tonight, treasures in heaven. Give him your heart. And he says, I'll give you my father's kingdom. He says, when you surrender your life to him, he will take care of you. He will fix your financial problem. And things will be worked out in the way he wants it to be worked out. Amen. I'm glad to tell you, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5. Going down, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. One word it says, says what? Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding in all thy ways. What? Acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and what? Depart from evil. It shall be what? Help to thy what? Neighbor and what? Model to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy what? substance and with the what? First fruits of all my increase and what senses so shall thy what? Barns be what? Filled with plenty and thy what? Crosses shall what? Burst out with new wine. God wants to give you new wine. The wine you are on is old wine. God wants to give you new wine. But he says now give me your life. Give me your life. Let me straighten out the bank account. Give me your life. Just give me your life. Just put your life in the palm of my hands. That's all you need to do. Don't worry about the bills that you have to pay. He says, I will make a way somehow. Psalm 37, the Bible says, Psalm 37, verses 5, 4 and 5. Psalm 37, verses 4 and 5, it says, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall not bring it to pass. Do you want him to bring something to pass for you tonight? He says, give me your heart right now. Give me your heart. Turn it over to me. And he shall bring forth, verse 6 says, thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the new day. Rest in the Lord, verse 7. And wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who what? Prospered in his way. Because of the man who what? Wicked devices to pass. Tonight God says, put your trust in me. And I want to do something great for you. David said, I've been young, and now I'm old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor received begging bread. God wants tonight to bless you. Do you want to be blessed tonight? Jesus wants to bless you. It's your desire. I want to have a special prayer for those who are sincere. But they want God to bless them. He says, when we call upon his name, he will answer when we come sincerely. God said he wants to bless you tonight. You are struggling to give your heart to him. He says, give me your heart right now. Right now. I'll fix the financial problem. I'll fix the health problem. Give me your heart right now. Right now. Right now. Are you the first to say, God, I want to bless you. I want you to bless me. Would you get right up from all of your seat and say, Jesus, I'm going to claim your promises tonight. Tonight is my night. Let's get up from where you are and come. You're giving Jesus your life. I say, bless me, Lord, bless me. Bless me, Lord, bless me. Bless me, Lord. I, I'm going to claim my blessing tonight. Leave from where you are and come right now. You need to give your heart to Jesus. To Jesus, bless me now. Turn my life over to him. 
I have so many financial problems. I have so many problems on my hand. But Jesus says, I will fix it. Leave from where you are and come right now. On the outside. On the outside, come right in. Come, come right in. A special prayer for those who want to break through tonight. This is a night for your breakthrough. It's your night for your breakthrough. Just get up. Take your friends and come. Jesus says, I want your heart in the palm of my hand. Just break through and come. It doesn't matter who's sitting beside you. Just get up and leave them behind because you're going for your blessing. They are coming. Give space to them as they come. They are coming. It's your breakthrough tonight. You have been sure you can give your heart to Jesus. And you can't find it. The strength to give your heart to Jesus. But Jesus says, come now. Come. The sleep of the Lord. I need my blessing. I need my blessing. For this full time now, I surrender my heart to Jesus. Full time. Finally, I must get my way through. Too many financial problems. I have. I decided to follow Jesus. I have turned my back on Jesus. And Jesus says, I want to bless you. I want to bless you.